Microsoft Teams and much of Microsoft 365 is designed and set up by default to be a self-service experience. This means that end users can create their teams, channels, and provision the other resources that go in them on their own without any admin involvement. This could be great to make your environment flexible and agile, but it can come with some challenges. The most common being that without good standards in place, you can end up with confusing team sprawl with a lack of clarity around where exactly resources should be kept or work should happen. So in this video, I'm going to look at three tools that exist inside Microsoft 365 to help you manage your team's environment in a way that helps to prevent or fix this problem. And I'll also consider why having good standards in place is essential no matter how many technical guardrails you put in place. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCourcy. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting firm focused on the needs of smaller businesses. We help small businesses around the world get more from technology. So if you're interested in finding out how to work with us, there are links below to get in touch. So why is team sprawl a problem? Not knowing where to work or where resources are housed can be a big drain on time and productivity. It creates confusion for your workers, makes onboarding new employees more complex, and creates risk when people leave, and just makes the management of your resources harder than it needs to be. Self-service creation of resources like Teams can be great if there's a common and widely promoted understanding of how resources should be used and who should have access to them. But in many organisations, this just isn't the case, and you end up with Teams or SharePoint sites or other resources throughout your tenant that are of questionable utility. Even when you get to the point of wanting to get the problem cleared up, that in itself can be a really big challenge, as it can seem like it's an insurmountable problem to resolve without losing something you need or upsetting someone else's workflow. Or you might even think that there's just no point in getting started, as as soon as you clear it up, it's going to go back to being the same mess again. Very often, I'll work with small businesses who turned on capabilities like Teams first and only thought about managing it later when everything became a mess. This is a really common problem, and so you're really not alone in this. And Microsoft really doesn't promote straightforward fixes as much as it probably should. Thankfully, there are several tools available in Microsoft 365 that help you meet this challenge head on. Let's look through three of them. As always, the demos in this video are in an environment set up for that purpose, and no private information is shared. Teams archiving is a solution you can use when you want to retain the value that has been created in your teams by allowing your users to continue to view their resources, but you want to focus work into active, non-archived teams. When a team's team gets archived, it gets placed into a read-only state for team members, meaning they can continue to use the information, and you can even add new members, but adding chats, files, etc. is not an option. A team can be archived by its owner or by an administrator and is a setting that can be reversed so that an archive team can be made active again if for some reason you need to go back to using it in the future. So jumping over to Teams, while you're in Teams, if you come to your list of Teams and you click on the ellipsis at the top for more options, you can go to Manage Teams and it will give you a list of the teams that you're able to manage. And all we need to do here is come along to the ellipsis at the end of this uh, team row. And we're going to click on more options. And we're going to click on archive team. And you can see what it says. It says it's going to freeze all team activity. And it gives me the ability to make the SharePoint site read only as well. And then I can go ahead. I can archive that team. If your end goal in your team's cleanup is to drastically reduce the number of teams, then archiving can be a step on this path, as you can allow users to extract those things from the read-only team that have a value to them before a later process of deleting them entirely. Archiving is a base capability of Teams and doesn't require any other license other than your normal Teams license. However, it is important to note that if your goal with archiving is to make the entire team read only, then its efficacy is pretty limited. 
You won't be able to send messages in channels or to edit or add files in SharePoint. But if you have attached planner or forms, these and similar resources are not impacted by archiving. If your objective is to genuinely retain all the data, but to avoid it being changed going forward, there are processes you can go through to export and migrate the data from each of the connected services, but the level of effort here is significantly beyond the process of archiving a team. Before we jump into tool number two, can I ask you a favour? If you're getting value from this video, please give it a thumbs up to help it get in front of new people, and leave a comment with your thoughts or just how it helped you. Also, if you want to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Beyond archiving, another tool available to you to help manage Microsoft 365 groups is setting a group expiration policy. Now remember that anything you do that impacts Microsoft 365 groups will also impact Teams, as a team is always built on top of a Microsoft 365 group. What an expiration policy does is to delete groups that have not been used in a certain period of time, so that you are automatically reducing your teams to those under active use. Depending on the resources that are part of the group, activity can mean different things. But in the context of a team, all someone has to do is visit a channel in that team in order for the expiration timer to be reset on it. In addition to just waiting for activity to happen, the group owner will also be emailed to let them know the group has been inactive, so allowing them to renew the group by doing some activity if they wish to. So pretty much every base is covered before anything gets deleted. So we're going to jump across to the Azure portal to be able to take care of group expiration policy. And to do that, we're going to enter uh, Microsoft Entra ID and we're going to come down to groups. And then we're going to go to settings expiration. And under here, we can um, set what we want to be our group expiration time. So the lowest that we could do is 30 days if we did a custom one, or we can go beyond this, but the default options are 180 and 365. We need to put in here a contact email for um, groups with no owner. And then we can go ahead and either select certain groups or apply this to all groups. And once we've saved this, it will apply an expiration policy per what we've selected here. Now there is something important to note here, and that's that Teams archiving and group expiration are not really tools that are directly compatible with each other in the way that you'd probably guess they would be. The logical way I think most people would think this should work is if you choose to archive versus delete a team, it's because you want to keep its contents, and so expiration should no longer apply. But that isn't the case. If you have an expiration policy in place that applies to a team that has been archived, then that archived team will get deleted at the end of the expiration period. There is no way to set expiration policies to archive rather than delete teams. In my opinion, this is rather confusing, and it would be great if Microsoft added an option to expiration policies so you could choose to auto-archive rather than delete the team that's associated or exempt groups with archive teams attached to them from the policy entirely. If you have teams that an expiration policy would apply to, but you want to ensure the content cannot be lost, then you would need to use retention policies to ensure a copy of the data is retained in your tenant. To use group expiration policies, your users need at least a Microsoft Enter ID P1 license. You need licenses for all members of all groups that expiration applies to. This is included both in Microsoft 365 E3 and up, and Microsoft 365 Business Premium. It can also be bought as an add-on to any other tier of Microsoft 365 license. If your issue is not just a sprawl of teams, but also a spread of permissions, then a tool you might be interested in is access reviews. Users get added to things over time and often their needs change, but their permissions don't really follow. And a single user might end up being a member of a lot of groups with vastly more access than they need to do their current job or work on their current projects. Access reviews offer a tool to allow you to initiate an automated process where group owners, individuals or other users review access to the resources they own or their own permissions to ensure that resources are only shared with those who need access to them. 
This can include reviewing the access provided to outside guests to ensure those are cleaned up over time too. This is a more advanced capability that may be beyond the needs of many smaller organisations, but for complex scenarios or organisations where specific regulatory or contractual compliance requirements are in place, this can be a really useful tool to streamline your goal of providing just enough access. So to control access reviews, we're back in the Azure portal and instead of going to Microsoft Enter ID, we're going to go to Identity Governance. And then under Identity Governance on the left here, you'll see that we have an Access Reviews area of this menu. We're going to come down to Access Reviews. Right now there are no Access Reviews in this environment, so I'm going to go ahead and create an Access Review. And you can see I can select what I want to review. So in this um, context of this demo, I want teams and groups. And then I can either select certain teams and groups, or I can have all groups that have guest users. So I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, select teams and groups. And then I can go and add one if I want to. So you can see I've gone ahead and added demo team one. I want all users of demo team one to be reviewed. And you can see there are certain options here where I need a higher level of license. So there's the option for this Microsoft Enter ID governance license that you need here, um, which I don't have on this account. Um, but you can, uh, you can add extra options if you're willing to buy additional licenses. And then I can go ahead and uh, specify certain reviewers. So I can select who needs to review, in this case, the group owners. Um, I can set a duration. If I want to, I can set a recurrence and when it's going to start. And I can set the settings of my access review in here. And so I, if I want to, I can auto apply the results that I get. And when I've gone ahead and created this, um, the people who I've set as reviewers will get an email um, notification of the review taking place and get the option of setting, uh, changing settings if they, if they need to in there. So this is a really good way of just checking that the people who have access need to have that access to whatever the resource is. To use access reviews, your users need at least a Microsoft Enter IT P2 license. This is included in Microsoft 365 E5 or can be added on to any other tier of Microsoft 365 license. I mentioned before the concept of just enough access. This is ensuring that your employees have access to what they need to do their job, no more and no less. And while this is always important for a wide variety of productivity and compliance reasons, it's an issue we've talked about more and more over the course of the last year in the context of AI deployment and specifically Copilot for Microsoft 365. Because of how Copilot for Microsoft 365 accesses data across your tenant to provide context to AI requests framed within the access of the user making that request, if you are planning to adopt this technology, then having a clear set of plans in place to deliver just enough access standards across your data is really vital. There are many reasons to be thinking about these issues, but AI adoption is certainly a topical one. If you want to learn more about this and why your data is so vital to your AI adoption success, you might be interested in my new book, Who's in the Copilot Seat? This is a guidebook for small business leaders who are interested in leveraging the benefit of AI. There's a link down below to find out more about it and how to get a copy. Now, while solutions like these are great, the baseline is that unless you have standards that are shared and commonly understood in your business around how to use IT resources, this issue of a confusing proliferation of teams or groups or other resources will be difficult to eliminate. You wouldn't let your employees drive your company vehicles without them understanding a common set of standards or practices. You wouldn't give them the alarm codes and keys to your building without ensuring they know the unlock and lockup procedures. So you shouldn't give them free reign across your IT resources without them understanding how to best use the tools they've been given. A really great place to get started with how to adopt a clear framework around how to use any of Microsoft's tools is their adoption website. And adoption isn't just something you do in the first few weeks of buying a product. It's about a leadership mindset and organization culture that's committed to developing best practices that leverage the tools you have available to their greatest impact for the particular needs of your business. 
there's no better time to start focusing on adoption than today. Whether you've just bought Microsoft 365 and you're starting to roll out Teams, or you've been using it for years and you're trying to iron out the types of problems we've been discussing. So if your Teams is a mess, or you don't know who's accessing what, don't despair. We are all on a journey of making these tools work and every business is in a different place. Every single resource you have invested in for your business, whether it's your buildings or your vehicles or your equipment or your team members, require investment in maintenance along the way to keep them operating as you need. Your IT resources in the cloud are no different. And the sooner you adopt that mindset and the associated work patterns that go with it, the quicker you will see order start to come to the chaos you are aiming to grapple with. As always, if you need help or advice with this work, check out the links below to learn how to get in contact. I appreciate you watching the video. I hope it was useful. And until the next one, bye bye.